guys welcome back to the independent investor channel ryan here we're going to drop you into the taxable brokerage account this is one that i don't chronicle very often this is kind of a an opportunity for me to invest when i want how i want not be restricted by the roth ira caps uh, i started it you know a couple of years back anyway i haven't really been building this account for very long uh, it is a six-figure account, so one of the three larger accounts that I do own, um, but it's always interesting to jump in and see the progress for you guys and showing you kind of what is possible in the retail investing world for, for just a little blue-collar investor like myself looking to gain uh, wealth uh, and demonstrate uh, that you can do it too. So with that, guys, we'll jump you into the account and conduct the review. So here's a rare opportunity to jump into my taxable brokerage account. This is one that I, I don't chronicle very often. Um, this is one that uh, kind of supplements my other holdings. This is a large, or my other accounts. This is this is a rather large account. This is just over a hundred thousand. On this, uh, I, this is where some of the options action happen in the portfolio, as well as uh, some of the single stocks. Uh, there's kind of a, a three-tier type of objective here, and I'm, I'm, I've really been off some of the passive investing here with the markets at an all-time high. Uh, I've been relying on my other passive buckets to do, to do well, but as far as multiple passive uh, angles, I, I've kind of liquidated out of those. And, and for you guys that have exclusive passive investing, you want to stick to those programs, you really do, because I'll be looking to re-enter um, those those programs with higher dollar amounts. I just don't want to enter into um, the market from a passive perspective with high dollar amounts. So that's where I'm going to put to use some of the um, cash that I have on on side uh, on the side right now, and kind of wait for a little bit of a of a pullback. I'm waiting for the first ten percent pullback, and then if I can put a little bit to work there. I'd feel a little bit more comfortable. I just don't see a whole lot of prospects uh, or a whole lot of runway going forward for passive. So I utilize, um, you know, going into the single stock and some of these, some large uh, growth and some dividend stuff in this portfolio, as well as some um, some contracts. So on, on the top end with the contracts, I'm not going to get too crazy on this. I've got uh, a, a couple of uh, put contracts that um, uh, have um, these are Bank of America number one. I, I won't buy Bank of America here in the upper 30s. I wouldn't mind um, getting them put to me at 33. So I'll collect a little dab of premium. I think this expired actually already. So I'll collect the little dab of premium and live to fight another day. That was $22 of writing on a, on a stock that just expired worthless, which is fine. Um, and then the highly on put contract, obviously, that'll roll off as well. That was a little more lucrative. That was a three contract at ten dollars, hundred and seventy two oh four on the premium there. Um, obviously doing well here, and um, we'll continue to write those contracts as we see fit. Um, the nine dollars are still in play, uh, expiring uh, May fourteenth and May twenty first, respectively. Uh, two contracts each of those. If it dips below nine. We'll obviously have those uh, put to us there with two contracts respectively uh, on different dates. So obviously those are those are doing well. Those are uh, set up here depending on what happens over the next two and three weeks. We'll, we'll monitor those positions and see what's happened here. Uh, I think the stock comfortably above 10 will stay there, uh, but we'll see. There's no there's no telling what's going to happen here as it's an early stage company and, and has just got a couple of quarters of reported earnings under their belt. And then finally, a couple of call contracts uh, here uh, at some 12 strikes, I believe. Yep, so I've got 12 strikes here, three contracts, nothing too crazy because as you can see here, the position is rather large. Uh, I've accumulated here, you know, we're down a dab in the, in the position, that's fine, but we've been establishing positions all the way down into the low eights here. Um, so there's a couple of blocks of shares that I'm actually up quite handily 
that I entered into it at the eights, the 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 negative here uh, came from some of the higher blocks of stock that I bought closer to twenty. Right now, the cost average on Hylion is about $14, so nothing too crazy. Um, we'll continue to monitor it. We'll continue to hold the stock here as it's uh, as it's looking like it's basing. Um, I hope it does, and hopefully we've got better days going forward. Uh, Amazon was a large position. Look for that to split here is the root word on the street. Um, so nice five-share position. It's one of those just discretionary monsters. It is the absolute best discretionary name. Uh, on the um, uh, uh, really on the kind of the big tech, I, Amazon's kind of a tech company for me because they've got multiple businesses within Amazon. So owning Amazon, you've got exposure to all of their online businesses, their AWO, which I'm really the most uh, um, the most excited about. So I needed a good lion share of exposure to consumer discretionary. So I decided to go with a five share position on Amazon and got kind of lucky with the earnings. Now it did digress uh, from the earnings uh, where some, some profit taking incurred, that's fine too. Um, we're looking to hold this position long going forward as we, as we continue to enjoy um, some nice value picking here as I've got Amazon still undervalued at 3,500 or wherever it sits. Yeah, just shy of 3,500 a share. Um, BlackRock, the best in financials as far as I'm concerned. Um, they manage the government pension program. Last I checked, there was about six or seven trillion assets under management. So just a just a beast of a financial company here. Pays a nice little dividend, but a 10 share position puts me at about a little over eight grand on that. So it's rather large. And then we took a liquidation in Duke. Um, I didn't get the channeling entry that I wanted. It was positive, but it wasn't too crazy. But I did enter into Duke at a much smaller position than I owned before at a 100 share position. And that was meant to take some profits, number one. Number two was to enter back into utilities with less exposure, right? So the 25 did it for me and uh, gave me that position and what I feel is one of the premier uh, utilities plays out there, pay a nice dividend and, um, and uh, we'll do that. The Southern Company is the complement to the Duke holding. Now the Southern Company was also a 100 share position. We entered back into that at about a 50 share position here. Uh, both of those are up. Those were up um, uh, as of Friday's close. Uh, from shooting this video and and um, we'll continue to just enjoy owning those long and then in the telecom space the only one that I've got here is AT&T and I believe these shares um, are actually long I've owned AT&T now for a long long time and you guys kind of can understand a little bit even the utilities and the telecom that I own in this portfolio I like to own in lieu of bonds so that's kind of my strategic angle We've picked up just a ton of shares uh, from AT&T Free as these are uh, dividend reinvesting back into the underlying. We may shut that off uh, someday. That's totally fine. And got just shy of a $10,000 bill in AT&T. Um, it is up in the positive. It's been nice. It's been a real, it's been, I've had AT&T in some real deep water um, down in the low uh, 26s-ish. Um, now it's fought back and um, you, it's nice to see that back in the black again. Um, but uh, uh, the queues I owned, again, from a passive perspective, I took some really good profits in the queues, and I'm just kind of monitoring it. It doesn't mean that I won't re-enter um, that, that ETF. I really like it. The queues is one of my favorites now. This is the first time I've owned it. Uh, I did sell it on a channeling. I'm being very aggressive with my, um, with my entries and my liquidations here with the market teetering at all-time highs. No reason to put enormous amounts of money here in in passive assets um, uh, unless you're just extremely long the market and you want to be uh, buying into that passive approach funding it up over time that's great uh, I'm looking to get a little better strategic entry on the market and that's just how I'm playing it and then finally here Leggett and Platten discretionary and Lockheed Martin this is a reestablishment here at 10 and I'm glad because it's it's come off a touch this is actually wrong this is actually calculating a cost basis of over 400. So Merrill's got this wrong. This will adjust. I'm actually up in the position. 
um, because my entry here was actually uh, much less than this. My entry was in the 370s, so uh, good to go there. Actually, it was about where it is now um, because we liquidated um, and took really good profits off the big position of Lockheed Martin, and then when it came back down, we reestablished a nice little 10 share position just because it, it's still undervalued. It's great. It, it doesn't help me for putting me or keeping me overweight industrials. Nonetheless, uh, it was just it, one of the top industrials plays. And I really like to own the company, at least in some small degree. Uh, so with that, guys, um, that's the taxable brokerage account. Um, and, uh, it, you know, we'll continue to monitor this and I'll continue to roll out periodic updates for you guys, uh, and, and see how we're doing in the performance of the taxable brokerage account. So with that, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the review of the joint brokerage account. Hope you appreciated the transparency here. This is a real account and, uh, for true visibility to bring you in and actually show you it provides validation, uh, provo provides credibility uh, to show that not only do I uh, run a financial YouTube channel, um, but I actually invest and I know a thing or two about investing. Um, those are two uh, conditions that I demand uh, of a YouTuber. If you're going to come on and you're going to share information about investing, um, I think you should be good at it. Uh, and I'm very good at investing. Uh, hopefully th this can provide you some motivation as to what's possible. I, I haven't been investing correctly my whole life, been a self-directed investor for, you know, about 10 years. And uh, so, you know, for you guys that are getting this information in your hands early enough in your life, uh, it's never too early to become an empowered investor. Guys, if you appreciate the message and make sure and subscribe, leave your comments at the bottom, share the message with friends, family out there, you know, who could appreciate the message that we're putting through. Appreciate you guys stopping by and catching the, the video and good luck in your investment future.